Well, this is a welcome to integrating Seesaw into your instructional routines. This is going to be an interactive interactive session so if you guys if there are times when we have discussion don't be afraid to unmute turn on your video if you like um or just enter it in the chat but but do join in with it um we know how much we like our kiddos to do that in class so if you want to join with me at those times that'd be great if you also want to explore some of the things that I'm talking about, you can have those open on a second tab or you might even have a second device with you. And um, this session is being recorded and I believe they will maybe be sharing the link out later, but it is in uh, with your tech director there. So they're gonna control that part of the recording for you. So, all right, who am I? Uh, my name is Emily Poole. And I am an instructional technology coach. I was a third grade teacher uh, just last year, and now I get to help teachers with technology. I am from Western Illinois, and I am a Seesaw certified educator. So love getting to share all of my um, Seesaw goodness to all those things. And I want to thank my host, and I think is it um, Rocio? Rocio, Rocio. Okay. Yes. Thank Welcome, you. Welcome, everyone. And I want to thank Rocio. She's going to be keeping an eye on the chat and she'll make sure to alert me if there's big questions because otherwise if I watch it, I just my brain starts to split in each different direction. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. And either if you guys want to, you know, go off mute for this one or if you want to enter it in the chat, I want you to think about some of your instructional routines or daily benefits or daily routines, anything that you do with your students on a regular basis, and how do they benefit some of your students? So what are the, some of the things that you already do? Maybe they're in Seesaw, maybe they're not, but you know, just in a normal day, what's something if I came to your classroom, I would see. And if anyone wants to unmute, you are welcome to. Um, or you can type. Okay. Very nice. Thank you. Tina says checks with under checks for understanding. It's always so important to catch them when they're in that moment of the learning piece. What else? And I just did a, yep, writing. And Dina, if you're like me, I'm not sure what age group you had, but writing instruction would be one of those things where my students could usually benefit from hearing it more than one time or having multiple opportunities for it. And so we're gonna talk about some ways to look at using Seesaw to help with that as well. All right, anyone else? And we have a bunch of slides in a short time, so I do wanna keep us moving. Yep, that independent reading, uh-huh, number talks. Okay, Mrs. Garibay, I hope I said that right. Um, Mrs. G, we'll go with that. Uh, yeah, number talks, small groups, partner, independent reading. Those are all things that you can probably see almost any grade level. They might look very different depending on the grade level, but you're going to see those in all different places. You might also be thinking about your, your whole group time or your instruction that is that core foundation of all students. Um, oh, giving them time to share, get them talking. Absolutely. I always think that's you know, we've, we've shifted in education. We like to hear more of student talk. We want them talking and them sharing. Um, also thinking about that small group time, when I was usually in small group with my classes, I know that the rest of the students might be doing their centers or their stations. They might be doing some independent work and those pieces. Well, we know that teachers, you guys are experts at your craft and technology is really just the tool and that tool helps us to extend the content knowledge that we're presenting and looking for in our students and using different instructional techniques, we can actually bring a deeper learning to our students and using technology can be that tool that really, really gets us uh, adding more to the learning for our students. Today, I hope that you leave learning that you can use technology and Seesaw as a powerful tool and that you can integrate it into any instructional routine that you're already doing to make that learning visible. Uh, you know, it could be something you're already doing and you just want to transform it a little or try something different. So just think across your day and how some of these examples may fit your content and your age, but others of them, you know, use those creative teacher brains and see how you can you know, adapt it to fit your classroom and your students learning. We are going to talk about specifically in this training, how we can integrate Seesaw into our whole group, our independent practice, 
uh, centers and stations and talk about social emotional learning as well. We're going to look at some of the CSAWS check for understanding resources also, which are for busy teachers like all of us to have some ready made things ready for our students is just a fantastic tool that you'll have available to you. All right, so let's look at these different instructional routines and here is an implementation model that you may have seen before. And I have a few pictures on my screen. So if anybody wants to raise their hand or if you want to, you know, give me a thumbs up. Uh, how many of you have explored or seen the SAMR model before? OK, yep. All right, so looking at these different degrees of SAMR and thinking about how we're using our technology in uh, different ways, we look at where we're just using technology to substitute. It's just taking the place of that paper pencil. Then we use it for augmentation. Maybe it's a little bit different, providing a website link or a video to supplement. But then we might even go a step further. Maybe it's students producing a podcast or summarizing a topic that they've learned about, but being able to showcase it in a different way. And finally, that, you know, right up there at the top is that redefinition. And that's the idea where we're using technology in a way that we probably couldn't have done things before without technology. It may be connecting with other classes around the world or, you know, being able to have chat sessions while the teacher is doing other things. There's a lot of things that we can do in that redefinition that really take us to the next, you know, that next step in learning. So thinking about SAMR, which we just explored, let's think about the Seesaw tools that we can use in our instructional routines to be able to push teachers and students into those higher technology integration tools. So when we think about using the video and photo and video tool to creatively capture our day-to-day -day learning, I used to say in the classroom, I wish parents could see what we do. I wish they could see because so much of our learning is not visible on a piece of paper or in a workbook, but using Seesaw's photo and video tools, all of a sudden I could bring parents into the classroom anytime that I wanted to share what we were learning or how my students were progressing. Uh, using the microphone and the voice tool, uh, last year I worked a little bit more with some younger uh, younger age students, I taught third grade, but this year I worked with a kindergarten classroom quite a bit, being able to allow them to use their voice and share things was just a game changer. And on top of that, now that I can add audio to literally anything on a Seesaw page, I've now broken down walls to make it more accessible for all students, including my younger students who can't read, but also students at older ages who need that extra support. It's right there. It's built in and um, just phenomenal for all students. Uh, pens and labels to be able to add those explanations and annotate the work. And then multi-page means you're not limited to one page. If your students take two or three pages to explain what they're looking at or you want to see them go deeper with the concepts, all of a sudden you can and it's not making your teacher bag any heavier to carry home at the end of the day. Am I right? Okay, yeah, <laughs> I see some nodding out there. All right, so we're going to focus on some teacher tested ways to integrate Seesaw into your classroom routines. We're going to look at all four that you see there and we'll kind of break those into different things. I want you to think about though, as we're going through this, if it doesn't match what your age students are or what exactly your class does, what's a piece of your day though that it could adjust from there? How could that work? All right, the first one we're going to look at is whole group practices. And you can enhance what your already established whole group routines are by incorporating Seesaw and the multimodal tools that are built right in. Here's a couple of ideas that you could do in your classroom to, um, to facilitate some learning for your students. Here we go. So the first idea is to use instructional videos. You could have set up your Seesaw and so kind of set up and ready for your teaching. Have Seesaw set up with your instructional videos to kick off learning for your class, uh, providing instructional content in the form of a video or a diagram, maybe even a picture is a great way to engage your students in learning new content, really helps them connect with some new things and, and build that bridge. We know that piece of background knowledge is so important to getting them to be able to attach to the new learning. That can be a great way. So 
if you have an instructional video that supports your core curriculum, you could very easily just add it into the first page right up here of your Seesaw activity. And what you can do in that whole group time is present it to the whole class. And that way you've, you've had that grounding moment together, everybody's worked together, and they have that locked in. The great thing is now that you have put it on the first page of your activity and you assign it to your students, the students can then refer back to that video later. So if they're independently completing the, that activity, we've still kept the resource in place for them to be able to help themselves. Now, if you're using a video in the Seesaw Lessons, kind of like the one you can see here, this is our Phenomenal Phonics Lessons video, you can project the video and on in the lessons page, there's a present to class. You can watch it together. Let's take just a quick look at this little sample. Let's see, click that. There we go. Letter P makes it pop. Letter P makes it pop. Pretty, pretty, please, and a piece of pumpkin pie. And all right, so you get the idea. You can play that for your whole class, and then you guys can come back together and have a whole group discussion about it, or you can talk about it, you can go back and click into certain elements of the video. So no matter what grade you are, whether you're teaching, you know, the sounds of P or, you know, something much higher at high school that I'm not an elementary teacher, guys, I, you know, but those concepts that are at the higher ages, you could definitely show those little clips, put, building in those pauses to build in those interactive learning and discussion together. Um, then you can always assign activities that follow up right in there for students to complete independently, but the support stays with it. Um, and then students can go back and refer to it, creating that independent learner piece. All right, let's take a look at another one. So whole group idea number two is stop and think during a read aloud. This is one of my favorite things to do. And sometimes my students would get so tied in to the books, they'd say, oh, why do you make us stop and think about it? Because they were just loving where the story was going. But it is so important to get them thinking as we're going. So you could use Seesaw to support that comprehension by first creating and assigning a Seesaw activity. The one you see here is a character traits activity, getting our students to identify the difference between inside and outside character traits. Then as you're reading, after you assign this activity to your students, then they can have, you can project this activity, you could do this whole class, and you can stop and record those things as a group. As the teacher, you can go ahead and record yours on the sample student while the rest of the students are still engaged at their seats possibly, or if they have their devices with them, they can also be adding their entries on theirs as they go along. So not only are you doing it whole class, but every student could possibly be adding in their voice. Uh, but Forcing those pauses and getting students to think about those, to identify those character traits is a really powerful tool in how to use it. And then you students also have this sample again and the example that we've created as a class right there for them to refer back to. And honestly, that was one of my favorite things about using Seesaw in the classroom is when your walls run out of space for anchor charts and you have nowhere else to put your references, uh-huh, I see smiling, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I could keep it in Seesaw and I supported my students by saying, oh, well, remember we did that before, go back and check. And then we're creating those uh, you know, independent learners as they think about that. Another word, another way to do this is to use the tools for something like sight words. All right. So a lot of elementary teachers do their morning message and they might do it on a whiteboard or they might do it on something else. But instead of doing it on those erasable boards or things that go away, what if you created your activity in a seesaw activity? Then as the teacher, you can go through and on your whole class board, we're pretending I have a board here, uh, on your whole class board, maybe you call up a student or two to do the circling with you whole class, but then the rest of your students have their devices on the rug they can still participate and they can still highlight or circle those on their task as they're working with you. And that's a great formative way to check how they're doing. Um, and I just, I think that's a fantastic way to keep all of the kids engaged and to see who's really following along out there and who do I need to follow up with. 
Uh, you can also have students, maybe they, or another adaptation of that is maybe they wait and they go back to their seats and they complete it on their own independently, going back through finding, circling, using the microphone to practice those sight words. Couple different options that you have there, but using that microphone tool to hear how our students are working with the text um, is great. Also, okay, and this was this was fun too, is to capture some classroom experiences. Uh, that was honestly my first exposure to Seesaw is taking so many pictures and wanting parents to see them. This is where I started is just taking pictures of the amazing things we were doing, but then it became bigger because my students wanted to say things about what was happening in our classroom. So take a picture. And then you can share it with your student and families and your family conversations are gonna be sparked. Your students are gonna be engaged. In this example here, a classroom hatched baby chicks and they documented what they saw a couple times a week. It became a science journal, if you will. And these new pictures would then inspire more conversation in the classroom and families at home might talk about what was happening also, they shared what they noticed, they used the multimodal tools, and then the teacher can tag the students in this journal so that everybody has this. So lots and lots and lots of possibilities how you could use it for a whole group. So, all right. Also, we know in classrooms, independent practice is an important part in getting those students to show what they know and how they're working. And Seesaw is a fantastic way to get students working independently and a way for us to be able to track and use that information. So we could teach a mini lesson, then assign the Seesaw activity as a follow up. And then as teachers, we can circulate to provide students that support in one on one or possibly even in small groups as they go on. Here's an example. This student was working on creating patterns and using the camera tool, they could capture the pattern they created and use the microphone to tell more about what they created. And then teachers can go back and view the students learning once they submitted their work. This almost can put you as the teacher in maybe 25 different places at the same time. I can't tell you how many times I would have centers papers here, there and everywhere and this pile and you never knew if this kid finished it or what they were doing or how that was working. No longer am I putting out this independent work and not able to check it a little bit easier, but I'm able to monitor and support my students on what they need next. And as an added bonus, and I always say this because I feel like parents don't see enough of all the great things that we do. Parents see what are the expectations or the things that their child should be doing at whatever age they're working on. Uh, while students are exploring and learning on their own, they might also want to use the label tool uh, to support their learning. So in this example, you can see the student had created their own insect with clay and they took a picture of their creation. They used the label tool and to label all the parts of the insect. Now they could have done that on a worksheet, but what's more fun for a student and engaging create your own insect and label it. Absolutely. It's putting that hands on really authentic learning for our students. Then if they want to tell you a little bit more about the insect they created, they can use the microphone tool and students can, you know, manipulate, they can create and all the while they have the ability to document and explain their thinking to the teacher or to the people that are watching what they're learning. Another way that, uh, and I saw we did have some CSI ambassadors on here, so I'm sure that they're already very familiar with the wonderful lessons and activities that we have in the Seesaw library. And there's two different ways you can access the lessons library. And this one is, is relatively new, but I love how easy it is to get to it. It's a one click. So anytime I can get it done in one click, I'm happy. But you can click right here to get to the Seesaw activity library, or you can hit the green plus button and choose assign activity. Now, when you get there, it's going to take you to the Seesaw Lessons Library, and this is this is fairly new. And the Seesaw Lessons are actually a school or district subscription. Uh, however, teachers have access to five free lessons of collections this year. Um, so these five that you see here are free for you to try right now. The numbers in space, the steam, the fun phonemes, the phenomenal phonics and the SEL stories. And these lessons are high quality standards aligned experiences that are ready to go in Seesaw. 
So that is an option for being able to support your students with independent learning. And inside one of those collections, you would see something like this. It has students have multiple opportunities to protect to practice. So in this one, it's the phonetic awareness. They watch the teacher, then sound hound. They make sounds with their mouths. They can refer back to the videos whenever they need help. These videos and lessons or collections, I should say, include instructional content to support students as they work independently through those skills. So I'm gonna play just a little bit of this video for you so you can see um, how that goes. Today is the p sound party. Come join me. Oh, hey, sound hound. Hi, Teacher Barnes. I'm excited for the sound party. All right, and we could keep going, but you can see down the side here that it starts off with the instructional video and then goes into different layers of activities for students to practice on whatever skill that is. They get those repeated opportunities. They can listen to them. They make them. They see examples. There's matching. Um, everything is included in those lessons. So if you haven't tried those out, you might want to try those out. But that's a great way for students to get that independent practice. Let's move on and take a look at some centers and stations rotations. All right. When you use Seesaw for centers is you Ah, you get a glimpse into every student's learning process. So if you aren't able to meet with them di directly, you're still going to be able to hold them accountable and they're still motivated to do their best effort. You as the teacher could give a mini lesson, whether it's through the Seesaw platform or in your whole group setting. And then you plan those centers for your students to rotate through and as they have their devices, make sure they have those open and available. They add their green add button or they complete those already, the activity that you chose for them. And students are able to complete that work and you as the teacher can follow up with that in their formative things. Activities that work great are things that you would have seen at centers. So hands-on learning, math manipulatives work, anything that could have gotten lost previously, now students can save that work and share it to the teacher through their Seesaw portal. Another great way is to add instructional videos. So in this example, there's a short instructional video of how the teacher played the game. Then when students go off to work collaboratively with peers, if they get stuck, they can rewatch the video and they can rewatch it as many times as they need to be able to support them in being able to practice that learning with their partner. And so then you can carry on with your independent or your small groups if that's what you're doing. Um, they can also cycle through things and record scientific observations. So in this example, the teacher had set up uh, different seeds and different materials and students could follow up with their thoughts on which one they thought would grow and which one they wouldn't. We'll listen just a little bit because they're a little Kinder first grade voices are so cute. I think soil will grow with flowers. I don't I don't think so if sand is gonna grow. <laughs> so just a great way to actually get them talking and thinking about the things that are happening in the classroom. All right. Oh, I and think there it goes. Sorry. Click, soil. click again. There we go. <laughs> There's also seesaw activities for students who Oh, you guys hear that weird noise or is it just me? You hear it too. Okay. Oh, okay. And now it's gone. Everybody good? Okay. Here we go. You can also assign Seesaw activities for students to complete. So in this one, which might be great for younger students, they can not only read the sentence, so use your microphone tool, but you can also then have them, you know, circle and carry on. There's just lots and lots of opportunities to use it throughout all of your centers. All right, let's take a look at the last one of this that I'm going to show you. And I'm sorry, I feel like I'm really, really racing, but it was a short time and I got a lot of stuff to share. Um, Seesaw is also makes it really easy to integrate and just to integrate, 
to fit in. It's not another thing, but integrate that social emotional learning into different aspects of their day. So you might use this at times of your transitions. You might use it at the beginning of the day, end of the day, before or after lunch, so on and so forth. And you can assign an activity, and I'll show you an example here next, for students to really stop and think about you know, how they're handling or doing different things. I actually had it in the morning. It was tied in with my lunch count. So my students did a little check-in with their lunch count, and then we did a social emotional check-in and allowed them some free space to tell the teacher, that was me, uh, to tell them what were some things that were going on in their life and how that might impact their day. Here's an example of a really easy check-in for students, and I haven't met a uh, under fifth grade, I'll even throw fifth grade in there, student who didn't love an emoji for whatever. So uh, you can see that they might be able to pick that and then explain how they're feeling. And as teachers, we can get some valuable insight into how things are going for that student that they might not just come up to us and say. They may not have that opportunity but if this becomes a regular routine, then students feel open and comfortable with sharing those things. Yeah, I'm with you, Tina, that they can draw their own because it might not fit. We don't have to fit inside of that box. You can draw your own. Now, a few students, you might have to put a time limit on, time limit on them, though. Yeah, you know how that is. But, <laughs> but still, I love that they can do their own. All right, you can also, and this one's great. This is a great way to build that classroom community is have a question of the day, a conversation prompt, if you will, that the teacher puts out there, tag all of your students. And as students comment, we're really building a community of you know shared thoughts and those kind of things. We're looking at what makes a good friend gives us insight as teachers on where we want to go, what we might want to support with. But it also helps them to build on or understand what their classmates are thinking and add on to those. So that's great. Um, there are some Seesaw lessons on the SEL stories, and those are broken down also into parts. So the first part of it is that you can present it to the class. It's an interactive read aloud. Then students can go through it independently during their centers or stations. And then finally, you can get to the part where students show what they know. So it's, you know, we know it's not enough just to talk about it, but to go through this and really let see what is sinking in. So here is what the interactive read aloud would look like. And as you read through these pages, you can, as the teacher, this is a great opportunity to model how to use the tools to respond in any way in Seesaw. As it gets down into the independent part, this is where they start to use the tools to share their reflections, to show how the characters are feeling in the story, what clues are the students picking up on inside of that, inside of the story. And I think that, I think he's a hedgehog. He looks very, very upset there in, the, in that picture. Then they get down to the show what you know activity. And students can use the video tool, they can use the microphone to talk about what they're, to, uh, sorry, to show what they know about that feeling or what they're noticing about the feeling or any other way that you would want to adapt that for your classroom and how they're connecting with the text. All right, so using all of these different tools can help your students in any routine that you have, whether it's annotating text or showing your math or sharing or reflecting on their learning over time. All of these are great tools. And I always say it's my favorite part, but there's a lot of favorite parts. It's all nice and neatly kept inside of Seesaw. So I don't have to keep track of all of these different things. I have this wonderful portfolio of my students learning and growth that I can easily get to. All right. So yay. Okay, we're back to where you guys get to talk or chat. So get those typing fingers ready because the that that wait time is always really tricky on a Zoom. So how, what is something that you can see in your daily routine that, or something maybe that I mentioned that you're like, hmm, yeah, I think I could adjust this or I think I could adapt this. As you guys are typing, and if anyone wants to come off mute, please feel free to interrupt me, but I do just kind of keep sharing some things. Uh, kindergarten teacher that I worked with used her sight words as a practice thing. She would put the word at the top. She would even include a little video or a screencast of how to form different letters. She would do some things like that. In a, uh, again, I taught third grade 
once a week, my students had a fluency check. Whatever it was that they were reading, I had them use their the iPads we had in our classroom. They took a picture of the page and they just did a quick little reading. Guys, it was a running record on the fly. They didn't know that that was what I called it, but I could absolutely, while I was doing guided reading group, I could still see that my students were engaging with books that were just right for them at the time. Um, the fluency routines. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great way. And over time, the students could even this was not on my notes, but I'm just going for it. Um, over time, my students could hear the difference in their reading. That was important is they didn't understand that they sounded like a choppy robot. And then it was like, no, it should flow like a river, you know, flowing reading should be good. Uh, you know, looking at that. So who else don't be shy guys if you're out there and you have something in your room or your idea. Um, another great one was math again, third grade borrowing regrouping. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's real. It's hard. And they don't get it usually the first time. So I would actually have my students independently solve some of their work and then create their own little screencast of them solving it so that when they went home, if they were going to practice at home or show mom and dad another opportunity to let it sink in uh, to hold on to that learning. Stop and think during the read aloud. Yes, it it would be kind of similar to having them keep it on a notebook, except the difference is I might not get around to collecting all 25 notebooks and see what they were actually thinking. If they put it in Seesaw, I generally would see what was happening. And yes, Juan said exit tickets, knowing what they captured and what they have, super important. All right, if you guys have any more, feel free to keep adding them. So we know that it can be tricky to find just the perfect activity to for students to show their learning. So this next section, guys, is fantastic because it's created to help save you time and energy. And so you can take a look at these ready to go activities. They're offered in both English and Spanish to assist you in getting that insight of where your students are in their learning. So inside of this collection, you will find these already made for you. Show what you know. There's a couple different examples, the pre-K and second. You'll also see the explain your thinking, and I will be dropping the link to this here in just a minute, guys. So uh, you will have these and then just save those right over there. Uh, the reflection routine. So thinking about this, and I like that we offer and notice the difference between the pre-K uh, second and the third through fifth. But honestly, if you're a third grade teacher and you still have a student who's working at a first grade level, okay, then, you know, make that adaptation. It, that is up to you um, as the teacher and you know your students best. I think someone said exit ticket. So here's one open-ended, any subject available in any way that you would like. Choice boards. So again, getting some student choice and voice. Uh, and these can all be found and you can assign them right there from the activity or you can open it up and you can always still make those edit changes to the activity in any way you want. So you can save the activity to your library by hitting the heart. And then this one here is the explain your thinking for pre-K second. But there's you can look for the different ones based on which grade band you need. Once it's in your library, this is where you can either just boom, assign it straight to your students by hitting assign in the upper right hand corner. It'll pop up here and you can decide which class you're going to assign it to. You can also go into, you know, editing which students are going to be receiving it or which folders. Those are all in the adjustments uh, that you can make right in here. And even though they're ready to go, if you want to change them, you can. So in this one, you can notice that the activity is universal. There is nothing tying it to any one specific thing. So you can use it over and over again any way that you would like. In this one, the learning is easily captured using the different tools in Seesaw. This is a first grade class that was learning about summarizing a story. So students could use that camera tool. They take a picture of the cover of their book. Using the microphone tool, they could summarize the story. And this, as teacher, giving us insight into the student's ability to summarize. So um, I think, yeah, we have a minute that we can let's see. Fergus and Zeke takes place in a classroom. Fergus and Zeke are mice, and they are the class pets. They want to be in the sci class science 
And we learn so much from actually hearing their voices, right, as they talk about it. Because if that student is saying, um, there's some mice and uh, they like to grow flowers, then we're going, I don't know about that. Um, but then they add the, hit the green check and it is added to their journal. Okay, so the microphone tool is not speech to text. It is an audio file and it can be attached to any object on the page. So if they take a picture and they wanna attach it to the picture, they can add it to the picture if they wanna add a, you know, anywhere on there. Yeah, great question. All right. And after they complete their check for understanding as teacher, we get to review it. And then we have those options of whether we want to comment or we wanna leave an audio comment. And that's not just for the little kids. I think the audio comment is even powerful with your older students. They wanna hear their teacher's voice. They have a connection with you. Um, and those are on there. And those ready to go activities make that formative assessment easy and you don't have to create it. Okay, and we know you guys are creating enough amazing opportunities for your students that if you can take one of them off your plate, it makes it a little bit better. All right, here is, let me drop these links in the chat. So give me just a second, I'm gonna copy the link. Uh, the first link I'm gonna give you is the guide to integrating Seesaw. So uh, a lot of the things that we talked about, and I know we didn't have a lot of time to explore those things, but you can keep this link and go back and look at it. It also will take you to um, some of the activities, I think. And then here's another link to the ooh, copy link and paste there we go okay this is a link to the picture word match activity so if that was something that you wanted to take a look at you could click that now i'm going to give you one more and i'll put this one in there okay this one is and this third one that i gave you is a link that takes you directly to those easy ready-made check for understanding ones so go ahead and make sure you click that and save that one um so that you can access those later and you know in any which way that you have it want to explore those for your classroom all right so we did it i'm a little surprised i actually ended with time for questions because um yeah thank you i appreciate that <laughs> Uh, sometimes I like to tell a few too many stories. So we talked about some routines for your whole group, your independent learning, some centers, some social emotional learning. Uh, and you, I shared with you how to use the checks for understanding to easily check out some student learning. But I'm curious now, uh, you know, for you guys, what would be a goal? Because I, I, you, maybe you're on year long school. I'm not sure. But what is a goal that you're going to integrate a seesaw piece into an instructional routine that you already do? Yes. And I think Rocio, did I say it correctly? I hope so. Yes. yes. Yay. Okay. So Rocio tapped it or put the link in also for attendance. So make sure you do that. And what is a goal that you set for yourself? Because we know if we set just one little bitty goal, like I'm not going to ask you to, you know, upset the whole apple cart or anything, but what's one thing you could see maybe shifting into a seesaw routine? And I will tell you, uh, creating a, a routine or a regularness to using seesaw will help your students at the more you do it. So, uh, since I have time for a one minute story. Uh, in 2020, we all remember that, uh, my students had been using it from the beginning of the year. So when we, it was just, it was our normal. There were things that we just did. It was something I was passionate about, hence why I'm here today. And uh, it was just something that was our normal. So when we shut down in 2020, yes, everything went bonkers, but my students, the ones that had access and were able, jumped right back onto Seesaw and there were some activities and things that I was able to still give them opportunities to do at home. I know it wasn't the same, it wasn't regular, but they jumped on it, it gave them that sense of normal, even though they weren't in the classroom. So, um, but they only knew how to do that because we had been practicing it on our regular day. It was normal. So creating that opportunity for normal. So. All right, and I guess everyone's quiet. That's okay. I hope in small groups or if you have an opportunity in your district to talk about goals that you set for yourself or things that you can do and working together, uh, you know, is always a little bit better. So 
If you want to learn more, I want to thank you so much for, uh, and we have time for questions, so I'm not, I'm not leaving yet, but if you have questions, I'll try to answer them. Uh, but if you want to know more, if this is like, oh, this is great, I want to know more, you can check out free on-demand training at web.seesaw.me slash training. There is also a robust uh, YouTube group and Facebook, so your learning doesn't have to stop here. You can engage more if you would like. So. All right. What is the name of this session? Ooh, that's a. Uh, I got it. You got uh, it. Yes. That's the name of the session. Integrate seesaw into our into your instructional routines. Uh, Emily, thank you. This was a very informative session about seesaw. So uh, please uh, sign in. Uh, use the form for attendance. And any questions you might have. And I'm going to drop one more link in there, guys, for feedback. If you have another few minutes, I'm sure you'll, you know, ask that. But we, of course, want to always, just like with our students, collect that formative feedback. What can we improve and continue to explore uh, to meet your needs better? Was there something more you wanted or something less you needed at this one? Please, please, please let us know. We do read these and try to improve from there. Are there any questions or anything anybody wants to share? You are welcome to unmute even. I, I um, if, if there's anything you can share with our group collectively about um, offerings in Spanish, that would be really beneficial for those in our in the SAISD district. Okay, I don't have anything right now, but I'm gonna put that down on my notes and see if when we, um, I mean, there'd be some awkward clicking and staring off into space while I was doing some stuff, but I will let my Seesaw folks know and we'll see if we can't gather and pull together some resources. So. And of course, there is the translation tool that's built right into Seesaw for families and stuff, which is fantastic. So that's a good one. Um, so that as teachers, if I don't speak Spanish, my families can still have that. But yes, and I should, here's fun fact. I was a Spanish major in college. So like I used to know a whole bunch of it, but you know, if you don't touch it for, you know, 20 years, it's rough stuff, so. But yes, I will put that, I put that down in here as a follow-up that we can try to get to you. Awesome. All right. Well, I will, I will stop sharing if that's good. And thank you so much, everybody, for coming. And I hope that you have a great uh, couple, couple days here of learning. I think you guys have some awesome opportunities ahead of you.